Hi, this is Joe Lynn from One Heart TV, and I'm welcoming you today for another wonderful uh, interview with a good friend of mine, Sandy Rockowitz. Is that how you say it, Sandy Rockowitz? I want to make sure. Uh, like the tennis racket, Rack Rackowitz. Rackowitz. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know your first name, but all right. It's good to see you today. And um, Sandy comes with a wealth of knowledge, 30 years of professional experience in the healing arts. Uh, she has trained care, uh, care professionals and animal lovers to move to the forefront of the animal communication and holistic healing area. Um, she's got, we've got a lot to talk about with so many hats that she wears. And I want to welcome you again, Sandy. Thank you for joining us. Um, how are you doing today? Look at that beautiful picture behind you. Oh my God, who is that? Well, first, hi, it's good to be here. And uh, thanks for inviting me. It's fun. It's good to see you again. And behind me is my horse, Evis. He uh, passed away a year ago, and I was 37 years old. And I had him for 32 years. And he's been part of the inspiration, a big part of the inspiration for a lot of the different work that I do. Yes, he was. Big part of your life. Big part of your life. Um, so let's touch a little bit on this um, animal communication and how you got started. And if you would share with the folks how you got started with this. Well, um, it's actually through Ebus, this horse, <laughs> and um, I had been training horses and teaching horse, uh, horseback riding for quite a long time by the time I got him in my late 20s, and uh, he was, there were issues that behavior stuff that was coming up. Uh, problematic things that I couldn't quite touch and reach into. I knew that there was a lot more to this horse and I started doing uh, Tellington T-Touch while I was at one of the trainings. My roommate, it was a seven-day training at the time, my roommate started talking to me about animal communication. And even though when I was a teenager in the 70s, I was you know, interested in ESP and so forth, I really didn't know anything about animal communication. And I hadn't really heard of it as a thing before. And so I uh, was introduced to Penelope Smith, who is one of the pioneers of animal communication, and had a session with her. And it, I, I had this sense inside of me that, oh my God, I want to do what she's doing. I want to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And it changed my life. That particular session really touched so deeply into some pieces that there was no way that she could have known any of the information she had given to me. And it touched into things that were going on for him and with me that were very, very profound and um, really helped open up those doors. So that was the very, very beginning. I got her classes and, and tried to do it on my own, couldn't really figure it out on my own. And then I went into the Barbara Brennan School of Healing, and uh, which is a four-year program doing energy healing with people. And it's really through that connection and opening my sensory system, but also doing so such really deep personal work through the school. And then teaching that I started uh, teaching at the school for six years after that, that I started bringing that into all of my sessions with um, people and animals. At that, at that point, I already was doing hands-on body work using T-Touch with horses and started integrating the energy healing um, really just, well, Ebus was my guinea pig, so to speak. He was my research assistant. <laughs> so everything I learned in, in the Barbara Brennan School, I was uh, trying out with him as well as my human clients. And so through all of that opening, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about him. And I, 
it opened my sensory system in a way that I could start receiving many different types of information, not just hearing things, but through my heart, through emotions, through uh, kinesthetic awareness and so forth. And so that really was the early, set the stage, it was the early beginnings of what I now do and teach as animal communication. It's much more expansive than that now. Wow. Wow. Well, it said on, on your uh, site that you, well, let's talk a little bit about T-Touch. Uh, you, you referenced that. Can you explain a, uh, maybe a short, I don't know if there's a long explanation, but a short one about what exactly T-Touch is? For the so Tellington T-Touch is a form of hands-on work that was developed originally by Linda Tellington Jones over 40 years ago with uh, horses. And it is very gentle. It uses, uh, it's a combination. It's very unique system. It's now worked, uh, used with companion animals, animals in zoos, exotic animals, uh, and also with people. And I actually have spent the last two and a half years teaching directly with Linda online in a series of four different programs using T-Touch for self-help for people. And, and so the essence of the work is a very gentle one and a quarter circle. It seems like such a simple little thing to be doing but can create profound changes, release pain, release the memory of pain, connect in with our divine essence into every cell in the body. That simple one and a quarter spiral just does so much. Um, and so it's a combination uh, with horses, with the body work, with a, a whole series of in-hand training as well as riding. With dogs, there's the in-hand work, there's body work, um, and all sorts of uh, leading exercises and so forth. And it's also really a philosophy about connecting with um, the divine essence in every being and recognizing that everyone comes from this place of uh, divinity. Although you don't have to believe in that to have it be useful. Right. You, know, you can teach it with kids, love it, um, any age range. You don't have to know anything. All you have to do is put your hands on or visualize what you're doing and it can be very effective. So it's deceptively simple. Well, you know, I, I know there was something to it when I brought my little, my little six pound scooter Chihuahua to you. He was having really struggling with knees that were bothering him at his age. And, uh, you know, he had seizures. So we were doing what we could do. And I brought him to your home and immediately you touched and he just, he just, he was all anxious at, at the beginning and then he just kind of melted away, so to speak, is all I can say. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah, I remember that. I actually remember when I first moved here, before you brought him to the house, uh, working with him and we met at a park somewhere. Oh, that's right. And, and really helping his gait. He was having some hind end issues and stuff. And yeah, yeah love it. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. Well, thank you. Yes, I did meet um, uh, her once when you were doing a workshop with uh, your, what do you, what would you call her? Your guide, your, your instructor, your. Oh, I'm, right. With Linda I, I mean, she's been her. big in your life, big in your life. So yes. And I saw, I saw what she did with, with the animals, the dogs in particular at this one. One, That's uh, right. You videotaped us. I forgot well, about that. Gave it a good uh, first Facebook Live yeah. <laughs> with you. <laughs> a lot of people at that. Well, you know, that's interesting. Tea touch. Just a little. I love it because we just. I just talked to a friend uh, a week ago, an uh, interviewer, and um, and she was talking about energy. You know, vibrational energy. So I don't know if that has much to do with what you're talking about, but I do know that we vibrate at a certain frequency being a musician and, and our cells vibrate at a certain vibration. And so it's, why not? Right. Why not? Why not? Well, you know, the thing about the, what, there's some interesting things about telling and T touch and that is 
it is really based on direct hands-on work where you are doing a series of different circular touches, lifts, strokes. And in that regard, it's not energy-based, but as we know, everything affects energy. The initial intention of it is not that we're going in and doing energy work. Of course, I also went to the Barbara Brennan School of Healing and that is also hands-on, but it is really energy moving through you and, and really directing and working with that on all levels, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual levels, very consciously and allow it how that energy can move through us, through source and connect with the earth. So, you know, every, every modality has their perspective and place through which they, they come and, and focus with. Right. So much of the time, Sandy, we can't speak to our beloved babies. Okay. That's us who have fallen in love with our cats, our dogs, our birds, our, our horses, whatever. Um, when we know something's going on intuitively, but we don't know what, and they, we just don't know what to do. That's, that's really where you come in, right? Are you, I took a class on it and you, you have to correct me on this, but it, it was a matter of dropping your mind, your, your chat box, so to speak, into nothingness. I mean, that's always a hard one in meditation so that you can hear, do you get actual uh, verbal communication? Um, can you explain yeah. that a little bit? Yes, this is, I love this area so much because, you know, it is, it can be, it's what you described, but I know for me going that particular route didn't work because my particular brain is pretty busy, very active, and it's hard just through meditation and saying, I'm going to get quiet right now. It's that that route for me to find that place internally to connect with the animals was a a more difficult route and so Ebus this course is the one who helped me really understand a much broader sense that and you know all of my training and work through Barbara Brennan school because it is how we receive information through our sensory system that's hearing smell through uh, our heart, our connection with each other, our emotions, our kinesthetic sense. And our, those senses, those normal five senses, can open and expand beyond the normal range. Most people have that happening all the time, but not so recognized. Most people nowadays, it's very interesting to see, sort of watch how lingo changes and where we go with it, give this overall scope of discussion about intuition and kind of, not kind of, but really use that as a blanket statement for different, for tuning in, but don't really distinguish between all the different senses and how we, we do receive information. And so that was, those learning that for me was a doorway because initially when I was trying really hard to hear because I thought it was supposed to sound like what Penelope sounded like in that very first session that I had with Penelope Smith, um, she, you know, versus what was actually coming to me. So I, I remember as a kid having a, a sense that went beyond words with the horses I was riding. I was always called a very sensitive rider, very, um, you know, like could get on the really difficult horses and, and find a way for them to go really well. The more challenging, the better it was for me as a kid. <laughs> and I just had a way of connecting that went way beyond words to this knowing of like who they really were that was beyond all these behaviors. I, I recognize that I didn't understand this at the time, but because that was me, you know, mm -hmm. 
know, it was like, I just wanted to be, you know, like most of us wanted to be really seen, felt, heard way more deeply than what was kind of showing up on the surface of, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I was really good at that very deep connection and listening. As a, a lot of people who have animals have that, but don't really recognize it. Mm. And so, you know, as an adult, I really cultivated and, and uh, spent time really focusing on how I'm receiving information. So much of what happens in the Barbara Brennan School with doing this work with people. And so I just use that with Ebus and then with all of my clients. So I would start hearing information. I would feel things. I would get information from diff in different uh, ways. Mm -hmm. And I learned gradually and continue to learn that it's not always what you hear from words, right? Mm -hmm. And so what, what all of this does to me for, that I see is that it, helps us tune into our heart. It helps us be present with that larger sense of who we are in the world that goes way beyond our personality, that connects us in with source, that connects us into the creative uh, flow, that taps us into the universal flow. And you can call it by many different things, but to me it all brings us back into this really beautiful, tender, vulnerable, strong place where we can receive in, you know, in ways that allow our truer selves to come forward, you know? Right. And um, I have a new series, um, the One Heart Journaling series that is coming up where we do that, not, you, you can do it. I, mean, I just wrote an email the other day, about, sent it out to my list about connecting with your animals and celebrating your love through this process. Mm -hmm. It can look like anything. I'm doing it right now through painting because it's a different way to, to allow that tuning in for that quieting to happen. The action of using colors and paints it's not about the artwork. It's about what's here, what's right here in your heart that, you know, that when our minds are buzzing is harder to just know what those deeper desires are. And for people who have animals, our connection with our animals is a, like the favorite way to connect into our hearts, right? Because they open our hearts. We just go there when we're with them or when we think about them. And letting that help you just like, as I said to my mom, my mom had never ever painted before. She'd never picked up a paintbrush. She said, as she said, not even to like paint a wall, right? Even though she grew up, her father and grandfather had a paint store, you know, like house painting paint store, right? Right. So she was surrounded by this. They were artistic. She was, she felt not a creative bone in her body, not in the least bit creative, not in the least bit, which isn't true, but she just showed it, shows it different in different ways. But she was like, I was like, mom, let's try this. Are you willing? And she said, yes, this was this fall for her birth, her 89th birthday. And I said, we're just going to move colors around the page. That's all. We're just going to put color on the page and just use paintbrush and you're going to move it. I took the word painting out of it entirely. And after about 10 minutes of her kind of being nervous and like, I've got to do this right. And it's got to look a certain way. She just started like, you could see when it clicked and I love this place and watching it with people, it just clicked. And she was just like, Oh yeah, this color over here. And Oh, I'm going to try this color over here. And she's like, after a little while, she looked up and she goes, I can see why you like this so much. This is so relaxing. This just my, I'm not thinking about anything else. I was like, exactly. It's a different way to help you go into a meditative state and open your open yourself, open into just what's here and let's see what can, wants to come through. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's interesting. I'm so glad we're talking about this because the topic at hand here is, in my opinion, in today and ending 2020, which has been a wild ride for all of us in so many different ways. And so heartbreaking, heartbreaking for so many people um, that my heart literally is mm, going out to my beloved human family. And I got to thinking, you know, somebody uh, state stated uh, 2021 is going to be fun. 2021 is fun. And I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to focus on. So when you brought up this journaling class, I thought, you know, and, and connecting it with, or the art, I should say, connecting it to the heart, I thought to myself, wow, this is what we need, Sandy, for 2021. There's got to be some way for us to find our fun again and know that, wow, life is incredible, but this is a great opportunity. Um, You've been sending out a lot of emails about this class. Um, can you can you give a few more details about? I'm going to put links later in the YouTube channel and in the Facebook. But can you share where what more they can? Yes, if they're interested. And yeah, and it's not for me. For some people, it can be a big leap to go from wherever you are to fun, and so I really acknowledge that. Like, there is a lot of pain. There's a lot of, as you said, a lot of distress in so many different ways, you know, especially coming in through the holidays. It's looked very different for just pretty much everybody, I think. And, and so there's a lot of feelings about it. And for a lot of people, the holidays are difficult to begin with. There's a lot of grief around it. And I think it, everyone, we've all had to let go of, whether we liked it or not, a lot of different things, mm -hmm. right? being social in the regular ways that we normally do, being able to be active in the normal ways that we, we regularly would, you know, friendships have changed, activities have changed, work has changed, no matter, you know, no matter what kind of work that you do, even though I've been online for years, my work has changed and opened and, and shifted around, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think it's really important like the first class, it's a series of four classes. It starts the first, starts January 2nd, the first week of um, January. Okay. And it really, the first class is about energy. It's like what, where you are, what you're bringing. It's all about what does your heart really, what's your heart really been trying to tell you? And I mean that underneath the surface, you know, underneath even the if there is grief what whatever it is underneath the gratitude like what is just right here and a lot of times we don't know you know or we think we know and that's fine wherever you are about it is totally fine and so this first class I also work with the akashic records a lot of guides beautiful incredible energy comes in and we're gonna just help people to be with and release some of the patterns around grief and loss around whatever people are coming in with you know accumulated pain and just be with that and i will lead people in step by step through every single piece that we we go into and and some journaling prompts we'll see what people are bringing that day like I'm, we're just going to show up I have, and this is how I love to work and show up, we we'll see where people are. I have an overall structure and knowing of what, where I want to um, uh, work with and bring forward, but how we get there, we're gonna see when, when we're all gathered together. I've got people coming in from all over the world. It's so exciting. And then on the second day, we are taking that there is, uh, and I have it every other day okay. so that you have a little bit of space in between. The classes are going to be about an hour. We're not going to be doing it all day. We could, we could do this as an intensive, you know, year long thing. That's how much is in here, but we're just going to take uh, a little bit at a time 
and yet it's going to be very profound. And uh, the second class is focused on light. So it's like, what else is here? What, you know, a lot of times we look at what's, what's the light that you need to shine, you know, forward coming out. And we don't always know what's here. That's the thing. And step by step, I lead people through this beautiful process, what I call a heart self process that I have been cultivating over all these years, decades of doing so much internal work for myself, healing work. And um, heart self is a beautiful word that really just means self-kindness, self-love, you know. But I love the phrase heart self. It's like you're, there's so much connotation around self-love and what that might mean, or I can't, you know, or I don't, or I don't know, or you you take me away from that stuff. But it's just, it's a gentle process of just tuning in and being able to put some things out on the page. It's only for you. It's not for other people. It's not about artwork, you know, and having to be a Picasso or Calder or Michelangelo or have it be realistic. It's great if it is, it's great if it isn't, but just to see what's actually here because usually what we, not usually, what we find, what I have seen in myself and with clients and people who've been led through this process is you start to connect with this deeper wisdom. And even if you're used to doing that, even if you're used to being in the creative flow and the creative process, this is just a very beautiful way to keep opening and expanding and exploring and growing. And it's such a great time at the beginning of the year to be able to do this so that you can then take that into, um, I have the four classes are energy light, um, shadow and energy light shadow. And when we go into shadow, it's like, what's been, what, what have been some of those constrictions? What have been some of those blocks that help us? I don't see those as a negative thing, although we often don't like those places, but how has that been helping us to see, no, okay, that's not what I want. I know that there's something else here that I do want let's connect with what I do want. We're not, as human beings, especially in this culture, we're not as used to bringing our attention to what is it that we do want. I can't tell you the number of women who I ask, what do you need right right now? And I've been one of these people and sometimes still am. What do you need? What do you want right now? And I, when I was asked that question, used to just break down into tears because I didn't know, Mm -hmm. right? And many people start talking about all the things that aren't going right when I ask that question. Yes, yes. Right? All the things that we know we don't, that aren't working that we know, but, and that's how our mind is wrapped, right? It gets trapped. It gets trapped there sometimes, yeah. Exactly. And so this whole process is about let's acknowledge those things. They're important. Mm -hmm. They're actually very, very important. They give us great guidance, important guidance, intelligent information, but let's not stop there. Right. Right. Let's keep connecting into what is underneath and really deeply wants to come through. I, I just wrote this, um, email about this process and um, you know I've been putting a lot of my art it's totally I didn't grow up as an artist at all like in fact I was very stifled my creativity was very squashed growing up and um, like a lot of people you know, putting a mark on the paper, trying to sketch something, trying to draw something, there's a tremendous amount of shame. I know I'm not the only one. I talk with people about who have the, a lot of stuff around it all the time. Um, and on the anniversary of Evie's passing, the year anniversary, this last 
November um, recently, I was feeling really, really sad. I was feeling a lot of grief. I was very much in the loss. I mean, I was doing okay, but I was really, really feeling it. And so like I often do, I took that to the page and I started painting just bringing colors. And that's what the fourth class is all about, bringing how, how you can bring more color. What is What are those colors that are inside of you? They might be really soft and quiet. They might be really vibrant and big. They might be mixes of dark and light. And they have their own language. And so I just started painting. First, the colors were like dark and swirly and mixed. And, you know, and I wasn't thinking about what I was painting. I was just like painted this simple shape and started doing this um, way of using watercolors that was different than how I had used them before. Mm -hmm. which I just love and I'm going to share with people how to do that because it's so profoundly amazing. And I gradually moved, like I started realizing that the colors started getting clearer and less swirly and more vibrant. And there were messages, not word messages, but there were messages that were coming through watching what I was doing you know, and the process of what I was doing. And I kept doing that, like all I wanted to do in the evenings after I finished with my work for a couple of weeks was just paint in this way, like everything. And I, I painted like 30 of these hearts, you know, like different colors, different combinations, all sorts of different things were happening during them. And it just felt so nourishing. And this series actually got born out of that. It was all from holding that place of grief as well as holding that place of connection, that sense of reaching into what, you know, what I really wanted was my connection. What I was really craving was that connection with my horse. It might be very different for other people, but that reaching for something, that curiosity, that like just diving in and letting that come through, both the grief, both the feelings, you know, all of the other realms coming through, that is a creative process. Wonderful. That is tapping into that flow, you know, and and it's so powerful that if I had stopped at the grief, mm. like I, you know, spent a lot of years growing up, not being able to move out of grief. I had a lot of deaths growing up, a lot of losses in a lot of different ways, close, you know, family. Uh, and I didn't know how to move through it. And it's as an adult through all of this work, and my creativity and my connection with the animals, with Ibis in particular, but with the animals and through these other realms, that all of that has been able to move and move into something else. It's the something else that wants to come through and have its own voice. So many times grief, I know for my own personal have, we all go through so much through our lives. No one gets out of it, but you know, it can, it can make you angry and it can keep you definitely in that anger, which is not really beneficial to the planet and our, our beloved human family. So that's a wonderful idea. Wonderful. And I'm so glad that you, I don't know where you come up with these things. Cause as you say on your site, you have unique healing adventures and I would, I would call this <laughs> a unique healing adventure. So the class starts January 2nd. What time is that class? Uh, Sandy, is it midday? Is it on zoom? Is it on? Uh, thank you for asking all these questions. You can uh, go to one heart. I will one put heart that journaling.com good and uh, find that and uh, find out more information and, and so forth but uh, the class starts in the morning and I have uh, two days start at 11 a.m pacific two days start at 10 a.m pacific in this moment I forget which is which but uh, okay um, that information is all given out and I give uh, it's on zoom 
So uh, where people will have the opportunity to ask questions, interact, Good. which I love the connection. A lot of people teach where you can't uh, interact with person teaching and just get the recording. Mm -hmm. For me, I love that sense of connection and community sure. and people also seeing that they're not alone with what they're experiencing. That to right. me is really, really important because a lot of people with what, you know, especially right now and through the last year, feel more isolated rather than, you know, just the more we can find ways to be in connection, the better off we're all going to be. And so that's one way. It's not an ideal way. If we were able to do this in person, I would also be able to do it live here locally. Um, but for now, that's not the case. It's so much fun to do it together. Um, and I also give uh, a simple supplies list. So you can, at its most basic level, you can just have paper and a pen or colored pens or colored pencils or crayons. You don't have to go out and buy new supplies. However, if you'd like to really get into the experience more, and explore, explore. And, explore <laughs> uh, and bring more color, mm -hmm. uh, you can get watercolors. I encourage it. And I, there's two different types of watercolors. And I tell people all about this. There's one that's a liquid type of watercolor that um, uh, I'll show people how to do all of what I'm uh, will lead people through with whatever type of utensils, color, fun coloring tools that they have. Um, and uh, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. This and has only, been, uh, what's that? This been, is only $21. Oh, that's, that's a bargain. Yes. Um, all right, I'm going to put all the information in the comment section, and I so appreciate your time. I know you're busy, uh, but explaining who and what you do in the world, uh, what I'm doing with One Heart Interviews, basically, to all of you out there watching this, uh, is that I'm trying, i not trying, I am interviewing women only at this present time in fields in their perspective fields of what they know to give you insights into healing and becoming well again on your own. And it starts with yourself. So, so this is one way to do it with Sandy. And I hope you'll join her on her class January 2nd uh, in the morning. She's got a couple classes. There's still room available and she's got it all on her site. I will put that in the comments below when we do this. Any Great. last words, my dear? I just want to add that if you end up seeing this after January 2nd, still go to the site and there'll be instructions for um, being able to enroll in the future. Yeah. And there'll and, be other information there. So and of no course, worries. If you're on Facebook, you'll maybe have some kind of way for people to know too, right? Yes, for okay. sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Again, uh, this is Jolyn from One Heart TV. Thank you for joining us. Please share this video with your friends. We've got multiple other videos on oneheartinfo.org. That's W-O-N-H-E-A-R-T. And, uh, you know, share this with your friends and hit that bell so you can be notified the next time. Uh, we have a lot of, I've got almost, Sandy, I've got, I've interviewed, I think you're the 29th woman wow. that I have interviewed. Wow. So I just feel so on top of the world um, interviewing individuals that I know personally, as well as I don't know that personally and getting into digging into modalities that are really outside the box. And I would say what you do is definitely outside the box. So thank you again, Sandy, for joining us. And um, I love that picture. That's a great picture behind you. It's like yeah. he's, it's like he's looking right at us. <laughs> That's exactly it. He's still transmitting a lot of energy and healing. That's why I have it up. So thank you so much for having me. It's so much fun to reconnect and to be able to do this and share more. You bet. All right. Peace, love to you all. Until we see each other again, we'll, we'll definitely be hitting it again. Bye-bye, y'all.